Right, we're just going to quickly look at how you can open and develop RAW files in the iPad version of Photo. So the best way to go about this is to copy over your RAW files to cloud storage. Then from Photo's welcome screen, we want to go and add a new document up here. And we want to choose Import from Cloud. And I've got iCloud Drive selected, but if you go to Locations, you can choose a number of different cloud storage devices, depending on which apps you have installed on the iPad. So in this case, I've got iCloud Drive. I'm going to go to the RAW folder, and I have a series of RAW files in here. So I can just choose any one of them, and Photo will open and develop the RAW file. So then, important to note, as opposed to when you open up a typical image file, when you open a RAW file, you're taken to the develop persona. And that's a bit different from the usual photo persona interface. So on the right here, we have a series of studios dedicated to sharpening, lens-based corrections, and basic tonal adjustments, that kind of thing. Additionally, on the command menu, up here at the top left, we can toggle various options, including what's going to be most important for people who are fond of raw developing, is the ability to see where your highlights and other tones are clipping. So in this case, I've toggled clipped highlights. And as we can see here, we've got some cloud detail that's being blown out. So to remedy that, we can make our way down to shadows and highlights here, and just drag highlights to the left until that clears up. Again, we can toggle the other options, such as clipped shadows and clipped tones, but we don't really appear to have any clipping going on here, so that's OK. So for this image, I might make a couple of basic tonal adjustments. Looking at the histogram here, there's not a lot of deep shadow detail going on. So I might move the black point to the right like so. And as we can see here, that's now beginning to expose some clipped tones in the sky. So I could knock the saturation back slightly, which will remedy that. And that's about it tonally for what I want to do to the raw image. Now, there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to what you actually use the develop persona for. So you could either use raw development as a base point to perform further edits to your images, or you can do all of your work within the develop persona. It's up to you, really, and what workflow you want to use. So I'll just give you a quick tour of the studios. And at any point, you can find out what they are yourself by just pressing and holding in the question mark at the bottom right here. And we see we get tooltips for all of the major options here. So for example, we've got the Lens Studio, where you can do basic lens corrections, like distortion. We can perform defringing and chromatic aberration reduction and that type of thing. We've got the Detail Studio, where you can do sharpening, noise reduction, and also add some noise in for dithering or a creative effect, if you so wish. We have the Tones Studio, where you get more refined controls over the tones in your image. You can use a curves spline graph. You can also convert to black and white and achieve split toning effects. We've got the Metadata Studio. If your photos are geotagged, then they'll show the location here. Mine aren't in this case. And it also gives you a basic readout of some metadata. We also have overlays, which enable you to adjust areas selectively. So for example, I could create a new gradient overlay. And let's just pinch out to zoom out of the image here, see what we're doing. I could drag a gradient up here, like so. And then with this overlay active, any adjustments I make, so if I move back to the Basics Studio, for example, and I increase the brightness, they're only affecting that gradated area, so they're not affecting the sky at all. Again, just to demonstrate this further, I can increase the contrast. And we'll notice it's only increasing the contrast of most of the building and not the sky. To move back to affecting the overall image at any point, just make your way back to the Overlay Studio and tap Master here, like so. So finally then, we've got the Navigator Studio. And that just gives you a very quick way to either move to 100% zoom 200%, 50%, or zoom to fit. 
And then finally, we've got the History Studio, and that contains a history of all the operations we've done in the Develop Persona. So at any point, you can scrub that back to get right back to how you started. And again, I'll just scrub it forward to get to where we are now. OK, and that's about it. So once we've finished making our changes to the image, and we see we've got a bit of shadow tone clipping down here, but we're going to ignore that for now. To commit the develop procedure, we want to make sure we've got the view tool selected, and we get the options down here to develop, discard, and also a split preview. So you can preview before and after your raw adjustments. But we're going to go ahead and tap develop, and that will develop the image, and you're now in the photo persona where you can do the rest of your edits. Or not, as the case may be, if you prefer to do all of your work in the develop persona. So once we're done and we want to save the image, we can just tap the home button, and we're back at the home screen, and as we can see, it's saved the document. So that's about it for this video. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.